Thank you for watching us on YouTube. But did you know that if you're on the go, you can get the full show as a podcast now? You can get our morning breakdown of the most important topics facing our country, news not being covered by the mainstream media, interviews with change-making progressives, and info on what you can actually do about all this. Search for The Damage Report on your favorite podcast app and subscribe so you know when new episodes are ready to go. Uh, I want to talk now about media, right-wing media, and the criticism of it coming from the right wing. Senator Ben Sass, who has occasionally been vocally critical of Donald Trump, which in terms of actual action has amounted to nearly nothing, but he has been willing to criticize him. And uh, now he has a book coming out. This is uh, Them, Why We Hate Each Other and How to Heal by Ben Sass, where he criticizes the media, which seems to, I think, understandably get that the way to make money is to attack the other side, whether it's accurate or reflects reality or whatever. Um, but what's interesting is that he attacks right wing media as well, and in particular, Fox News, and in particular, particular, uh, Sean Hannity. So uh, it's really awesome. He says, um, that uh, the core objective of uh, the two different programs that Sean Hannity has, it's not to promote a particular conservative agenda or to encourage American patriotism or even to offer coherent <laughs> arguments against liber liberalism. His core cause is to rage. And he described most Hannity storylines as liberals are evil, you're a victim, and you should be furious. Which is both 100% true and a more concise version of that argument that I have ever made myself. So thank you, Ben Sass, for that. I want to read a little bit more though. He says, this is a quote from the book, Hannity tells a lot of angry, isolated people what they want to hear. And he has the delivery down to an art form. We'd all be better off, as would our communities, if we understood the game he and his colleagues on both sides of the spectrum are playing. And uh, there's gonna be more that we're gonna say, but that is 100% spot on. Angry, isolated people, just take a look at them, figure out what they wanna hear, and just say it to them over and over and over again. And that is enough to get you rich and to make you famous. And Sean Hannity and others have discovered that. And Ben Sass willing to, if not actually vote in a way that you know, yeah. stops the powerful people like this you know, from advancing, is at least criticizing it's them. A, it's an art form, and here's the thing. Everything that Ben Sass is saying is of course not new. Uh, it's not undiscovered <clears throat> from folks that look at it closely like we do. And more specifically, I have to a lot of times because I have to watch a lot of these guys. Mm -hmm. And I can, do a lot. Yeah, and, I have to, and there's a point when I predict what they're going to say, this guy too. Uh, um, when I'm listening to some of their opening monologues or their rants, I'm like, and then I'll fill in the blank before they get there. Mm -hmm. I'll tell them where they're going because it's the same thing over and over again. It's like, a, um, you know, there's some, some TV shows have a storyline that follows. Okay, let's put Family Guy there, right? Mm -hmm. Family Guy, every episode has a beginning and, a, and it ends in the whole storyline each half hour. Sometimes there's reoccurring characters and stuff. But it's this, it's, it starts and it yeah. ends right there. It's kind of the way they work. So except this is with news and then opinion-based news stuff. So when Sean Hannity goes in and talks about whatever, he starts and it ends it. And then the next day, he doesn't have to have any kind of connection to that last yeah. reality. He just yeah. starts it again. A lot of times it is, a, is re, uh, repetitive, but he doesn't have to have any kind of, of responsibility to continue the story with well, any kind of fluidity. We actually, we have an example of that. I'm gonna skip ahead one graphic. Uh, and so Ben Sass was talking about uh, the Las Vegas, shoot, Las Vegas shooting and uh, Hannity's coverage of it. So earlier on, early on when these sorts of shootings happen, there's often disinformation. Either people have found the wrong profile or there's just 4chan decides, you know, we're just gonna make up a bunch of stuff. And so that happened in this case. And there was a Twitter, fake Twitter activity saying that this person um, that had done the shooting was hoping to kill mainly Trump supporters. That was not actually true, but that is the story that Hannity ran. Mm -hmm. And so here is what uh, Ben Sass says. Having given his millions of viewers the impression that Trump supporters were killed and that liberals cheered it on, he moved on. It was a grotesque distortion of reality. It was quite literally fake news. And so what he's saying there yep. is Hannity did not even briefly say, "Oh, by the way, that major report we did yesterday and focused on yep. and raged on wasn't actually true. He just moved on. As you said, it's the episode's over. We move on to the next uh, victim complex and rage and all that. Absolutely, it's, and it's, it's crazy. I wasn't even fully like confident in saying that I would predict everything they said because I've done it like five to six times. I was like, oh, I knew he's gonna say that, and I said it first. Yeah. I love it that it was just confirmed. I had no idea that was part of Ben Sass's mm -hmm. uh, his book. But it's exactly what it is. It goes, it moves right along, and then so all you're left with is feeling that rage and that anger and that victimhood and going, yeah, I hate liberals. 
and then you end your show and the next day you have a, a new, yeah. a new, uh, a, he feeds you a new plate of hate. Yeah, yeah, and the, the angry isolated is exactly true. That is the perfect audience to try to tell, just tell these people, I am the only one you can trust. Everyone else yeah. is lying to you. Listen to me, I'll speak honestly. What they mean is, I know exactly what you wanna hear and I will give it to you. Um, and that is a reliable thing, you can come back every day. As you said, there's no evolution, nothing ever progresses. Nothing's, if there's ever a call to actually do anything, just consume what I yell at you and give me money in return. <laughs> um, and you know, a show like Hannity, that is exactly what they do. And there's others on Fox News trying to imitate that. He's perhaps the best, but that's what Rush Limbaugh has been doing yeah. for absolutely years. And as Ben Sass says, this is not something that only exists on the right. Um, there, anybody can technically do this if they find an isolated, angry community. And I will say, for this show, God help me if I ever become popular amongst a bunch of people who are unproductively just mad and isolated. We profile candidates because we want you to get out there and help them. We profile organizations so that you can get involved. We want to give you hope, yes. We, we, we profile the major challenges facing this country, but we also try to give you a reason to hope and things you can actually do to change it. We don't want to have every episode wrap up cleanly and then start up the next time. We're supposed to be moving towards something, something productive. And that hopefully will set shows like this apart from ideologues, uh, whether on the right or the left. I like it. And now, uh, just a little bit more from Ben Sass because I also want to get to Sean Hannity's yeah. response. But Ben yeah. Sass said, um, the incentive structure in the media complex rewards pushing the gas, not tapping the brakes or qualifying a point. Celebrities, political big shots and media outlets have junior staffers constantly tweeting and posting, giving readers new reasons to click and the sharper tongue to the post, the better. So that gets into how Twitter plays into this awesome uh, thing that we've set up here. By the way, if, if there was a button it was like it just on the wall, and you could press it, and Twitter was deleted. You would have to, I would be running at that button so fast. <laughs> as long as it's here, I have to do it for career yeah. purposes and all that, and occasionally it's fun. But if I could press a shiny red button and shut down the whole thing, I'd do it instantly. Don't you like seeing what some folks have to say? Yeah, some. If it was still at the base some. level of people, like, honestly just say what's on their mind, or maybe they show an experience, that's mm -hmm. fun. That's the fun part of social media, seeing people, other people's experiences that you maybe wouldn't have seen. You know, you can see some. what, you can see what whoever your favorite celebrity is doing. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, that's cool. Some, yeah. Yeah, I just, I think you should have to be a person. <laughs> to be on there, that would be an improvement. It's not the only improvement needed, but that would be one. So in response, uh, Sean Hannity said a lot, but part of it was, unfortunately, I went to bat for Ben Sass, who has proven to be the single biggest disappointment in politics today. He totally conned me, like he conned the people of Nebraska. That's, yeah, he says it's the biggest mistake he ever made was supporting Ben Sass. Really, that's the biggest mistake you've ever made? He doesn't actually rebut the points. He doesn't say, no, I'm not trying to stoke rage and isolation and things like that. Because he knows, like Sean Hannity is kind of a dumb guy, but he's smart enough to know what his strategy is. He just doesn't like that Ben Sass is laying it out as clearly as he has. Again, more, more of the over the top hyperbole. So his, your biggest disappointment wasn't supporting the previous two, two administrations go in the Iraq war in 2003? Mm -hmm. was, it, was it supporting that? Like unequivocally, and then finding out how bad that actually turned out. You don't regret that part of it. You regret supporting Ben Sass because he uh, exposed you in a yeah. book. Mm, that's a weird thing to say is your is your main mistake. Uh, yeah, and he could do better. And can I say one other thing? So one of my frustrations in media that's that's developed over the past year or so is I have noticed, and I'm sure many other people who create content have noticed, there's a big difference between what people say they want and what actually does well, that's the main problem. So people right. will very frequently say, just talk about the issues. And not like a particular instance of the issue, but tell us about the issue. So do a video about minimum wage or universal yeah. basic income or methane or whatever, and, and we do that. But those videos don't do well, Absolutely. they never ever do well. And I have come to realize why, and it's not as simple as they're boring. Yeah, that's part of the problem. But why is it that even the people who say they want that don't watch those? It's because I don't think they actually mean I want you to make that so I can watch it. Those people are pretty sure that they already know about those issues. They don't need to watch an explainer about minimum wage. They get minimum wage, they're politically sophisticated. They want us to do it so that other people will hopefully watch it. 
But those people don't even watch it either. So we're gonna continue to do that because that's our obligation, um, our responsibility and also our privilege to have the platform where we can do that. But while we're doing that, just talking about drama between media personalities and endlessly challenging people debates, that's what actually gets views on no. YouTube and that is frustrating. I'm sorry, I hate to stretch this further, but it's the way we are as lazy Americans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're dumb. Um, it's like I have a six year old kid, you know, he wants to eat his food so he can hurry up and get to dessert. Mm -hmm. And then, so if the broccoli's there, he'll have two pieces of broccoli. He's like, I had some, right? So if you watch the first 30 seconds of a video about the details, about uh, about the say the tax plan, mm -hmm. you go, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, they're talking about tax plan. I just glossed over the broccoli's nasty. Can I have the cake, please? Yeah. And so you turn on the it's fights on cable news between two guys who are fighting over whether or not yeah. which side is evil. That's the cake, and we indulge in that, and we get fat, and it's and then eventually you stop eating the broccoli, and all you do is eat all the cake. Yeah. And then we look, and we're dumb. Sorry. I feel like this is a critique of Sean Hannity and also a critique of my diet. Like I don't think it's really as much of a metaphor as he's implying it is. I think he knows that I literally had a big slice of chocolate cake two days ago at work for lunch when I have a bag of broccoli in the freezer. Dude, Ameri mm. and admit this worldwide, pancakes are breakfast food. You I know, know, you, know what the, you know what the tail end of that word is? Cake. Cakes. <laughs> we have cake for cake. breakfast and we give it to people and go, hey, here's a nice round breakfast for you in the shape of a circle. Mm -hmm. Cakes. The amazing thing about pancakes on the one hand and cakes on the other hand is that we don't even pour syrup on cake, <laughs> but we pour it on pancakes. <laughs> That's crazy. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.